Hair Food offers simple, superfood-inspired products that will make your hair look and feel amazing. Whatever hair texture or hair type you have, Hair Food has a recipe for you. Hair Food offers nourishing superfood-infused products that actually work to improve your hair, like the Hemp Extract and Manuka Honey Damage Recovery Serum that repairs and hydrates damaged strands. And they all smell so good. Every hair food product is free of sulfates, parabens, dyes, and is certified PETA cruelty-free. Not only are their products free of the bad stuff, but they're full of high quality ingredients and they bring new moments of self-care indulgence to your daily routine. I love this damage recovery serum. After a summer of lake, pool, and sun, my hair was fried, you guys. And I started using the damage recovery serum. My hair has done a total turnaround in no time. You cannot beat these products. Their quality is superb and the price is right. So if you're looking for nourished, healthy hair, it's got to be hair food. You can find these products on Amazon and Target.com. Hi, I'm Michelle Shelfont, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast, where we talk all about living in your adult chair, which means living in the healthiest version of yourself. And I appreciate all of you for being here today on this Thanksgiving day. I just want to say I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I know how hard you work to live in your adult chairs. And I know how hard it can be. <laughs> Let me just tell you, sometimes it's difficult, especially during the holidays, because we've got triggers, we've got company, we've got people that we're not used to being around, we've got to set boundaries. Yeah, it's hard to live in that adult chair, which is why I chose today to run again the beautiful show I did with Deb Dana. And we talk all about the polyvagal theory, which is helping us to keep our nervous systems in balance. This show ran in March of 2020, and it is probably one of our most popular shows. So I wanted to run it again. It's important that we remember how to balance ourselves in times of stress. And holidays, of course, are very, very stressful. So I know you are going to love the show with Deb Dana, and here we go. And today we have on the show the lovely Deb Dana. We're talking all about the polyvagal theory. <laughs> now, many of you are probably like, the poly what? What? <laughs> Let me just tell you for a second. The poly, you're going to want to hear this show. It's very, very important if you are interested at all in how, in triggers. That's something everybody likes to talk about. So the polyvagal theory uh, was discovered by Stephen Porges. And what he discovered was, and let, let me back up for a second. We all know that there is the sympathetic nervous system. That's when we go into fight or flight, and that's when we get really activated. Then we have the parasympathetic nervous system, which of course is the calming part of our nervous system. What Stephen Porges discovered is that we also have a third, which is the social engagement system. And it's actually a blend of activating and calming that operates out of the vagus nerve. This may sound over your head, but we have broken it down in this podcast. And the reason I had Deb on is because we this, this polyvagal theory is so important for you to understand. If you are someone, again, that ever gets triggered and your body goes into that fight or flight mode, or you get anxious. Um, if you're someone that has depression or chronic fatigue, or let me just tell you what happened to me. Yesterday I was driving, I'd taken my dog to the park to go for a hike. And I realized I came home. I was driving home. I had a lovely time. It was 65 degrees. I'm in nature, my favorite place. And I'm driving home. And I realized suddenly out of left field, I am so exhausted, I can barely function. 
I had to go home and take a nap. And I came out of my nap and I said, I think this is something to do with dorsal, which is part of, again, the polyvagal theory. And I said, I think I was in some sort of dorsal shutdown. All I wanted to do was sleep. So I sat and journaled about it. And sure enough, I'd had some thoughts that triggered me that were so benign, but they triggered me into this shutting down of my nervous system. And I had to take a nap to, to come out of it. So anyway, the nervous system, understanding how your nervous system works and everyone's nervous system is unique is so important for our emotional health. It's how we stay in balance, which is exactly what we are talking about today. So I cannot wait. Deb Deb and I had a fabulous conversation about trauma. Um, Again, depression, anxiety, panic, chronic fatigue, everything you can think of triggers, but also what then you can do about it for yourself if you are triggered, if you are someone that lives with anxiety, if you are like me in this dorsal shutdown is what it's called in the polyvagal theory. So we had a fabulous show, so much fun. So we're going to get to Deb in a moment. I just would like to remind you all to take care of yourselves during the holidays. The holidays can be very, very stressful and they don't need to be. Sometimes we need to not only practice really great self-care, but also reach out to someone to help us through stressful times. So I just want to encourage you, please, if you need help, reach out to one of our coaches at theadultchair.com forward slash coaches. We've got people trained in the adult chair model. They are well equipped to help you through anything going on in your lives. But let me just tell you, whether it's one of our coaches or a therapist or someone else, please, please, please make sure to reach out and get yourselves help if you need it. You've got to give yourself permission. Say yes to you. Take care of you first. It's not selfish. It's self-loving. All right, let's get to Deb. Deb Dana, LCSW, is a clinician and consultant specializing in in working with complex trauma as and is a consultant to the Traumatic Stress Research Consortium in the Kinsey Institute. She's trained in internal family systems and sensory motor psychotherapy. Deb developed the Rhythm of Regulation clinical training series and lectures internationally on ways the polyvagal theory informs work with trauma survivors. Deb is the author of The Polyvagal Theory in Therapy, Engaging the Rhythm of Regulation, Polyvagal Exercises for Safety and Connection, which is 50 client-centered practices that is coming out in a few months. And she co-edited with Stephen Porges, Clinical Applications of the Polyvagal Theory, The Emergence of Polyvagal Informed Therapies. I cannot tell you how excited I am to have Deb on the show. She is a superstar to me <laughs> because she knows this polyvagal theory theory. So we are going to jump right over to Deb's interview right now. Welcome Deb Dana. I am, I just told you before, I'm beyond excited to have you on and thank you so much for being here with us on the adult share podcast today. Well, I am really excited to be here and learn a little about the adult share podcast and talk to your listeners now. Yeah. I, and, and this is like, I love the polyvagal theory and the work that you're doing. And of course, Stephen Porges, but um, you're really taking it out into the world. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I was telling you that I fall asleep. I, I listen to your book over and over and over again when I, <laughs> at night. It's on audiobook. So I just feel like I know this theory so well and you so well. So thank you for all that you're doing. And We're going to jump right in to tell us, because this is a big word. It's a buzzword now. A lot of people are throwing this this word around polyvagal theory. What is it? (laughs) What is the polyvagal theory? (laughs) You're right. Um, You hear polyvagal theory all over the place nowadays. and, And I love that I get to kind of tell you what I how I would explain polyvagal theory. So polyvagal theory developed by my dear friend and colleague, Stephen Porges, is an updated version of what the autonomic nervous system is and what it does and how it helps us navigate our daily living. And in its simplest form, it has three organizing principles, hierarchy, 
neuroception and co-regulation. Mm-hmm. And once you sort of get the gist of those three organizing principles, you understand this big thing called polyvagal theory. So um, the nervous system is the foundation of all of our lived experience. So even though we like to you know, live in story or feelings or thoughts or behaviors, really polyvagal theory and the autonomic nervous system are where all of those things emerge from. So it's really important for us to understand this nervous system and how it works. And the autonomic nervous system, break that down even a little bit for people that are listening and they're like, what's that? <laughs> Right. So the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. And the autonomic nervous system is another system that involves parasympathetic and sympathetic. And those two branches of the system join together to create what's called the autonomic nervous system. And mostly the autonomic nervous system manages your automatic behaviors, automatic biological processes the interesting thing about polyvagal theory is that it has brought the, these automatic processes into explicit awareness. And my work um, on polyvagal theory is really about helping us become active operators of this autonomic nervous system so that we have some management over how it's shaped, how we reshape it, and how it operates in the world, which which I think is, you know, for, for people moving through the world is an interesting concept to think, oh, I have some some choice yeah. over the system that really works automatically in service of my survival. But I can also, what I like to say, befriend it, get to know it, and then reshape it in, in some way. Yeah. So what I hear you saying then is the autonomic nervous system, it's automatic. So would we say that it's unconscious? It's below the level of conscious awareness. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And it also has connections to your cortical, your cortex, and your thinking brain. So, it, it's this lovely communication that happens between the body and the brain. So, what you're doing, though, with polyvagal theory is to really, what I, again, I'm putting it in my words, making it conscious. Like, so we're taking that system that's unconscious and automatic and we're bringing awareness to it and consciousness. And then that's how we change this. Exactly. Because if it stays stays unconscious, if it stays what we call implicit, Mm -hmm. we can't do anything with it. It's just working in the background. So we bring it into conscious awareness, make it explicit, and then work with it. Yes. I love it. So the reason that one of the things I want to talk to you about, and I have five pages. Oh, boy. (laughs) We're going to do it in less than an hour. Uh Um, So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on. Again, there are so many, but here's one. And I just want to give people an example of why we need to understand what the polyvagal theory is. I have a lot of people that when they think about their childhood or their growing up years or whenever, they beat themselves up. Why did I let so-and-so talk to me like that? Why did I let my mother, my father treat me like that? Why, when I was getting raped, I didn't run away? Why, why, why? And they live a, they've lived a life of blame and self-judgment. And I think that what happened was really a good thing because it was their nervous system taking over, right? The automatic, or you say right. autonomic nervous system. So it was happening automatically to actually help them. The body was doing something helpful, but they don't know that. So can you please educate people on why this is not a bad thing that they could not react or leave or say stop? Please right. talk about that. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so yes, your, your autonomic nervous system works in micro moment to micro moment in service of your survival. And so, again, it's our brain that makes up the story that says, I should have or I shouldn't have. But the nervous system is just enacting a survival response based on the situation. And so the nervous system makes no moral meaning or doesn't assign motivation. It simply acts in service of survival. We humans make moral meaning. We then judge ourselves or, or blame ourselves or suffer shame, which is a common experience. When if we can look through the lens of the autonomic nervous system, we can say, oh, my biology was acting to support my safety in that moment. And in that moment, it was needed. You know, mm-hmm. In this moment now, perhaps it's not needed in the same way. And maybe we need to re-educate the nervous system. We need to reshape it. But in that moment, it was doing what it needed to do to keep me safe. Mm-hmm. And whether that was a sympathetic fight 
or a sympathetic runaway, which is that mobilizing system, or whether it was a dorsal vagal disappear, collapse, become numb, mm-hmm. disappear, become invisible. The nervous system was simply doing what it thought it needed to do. And you don't get to choose. We don't get to choose our survival response. So, you know, I often work with um, people and they say, you know, if you look at the person you love and look at them through the lens of the nervous system and are able to say, it's not that that person wants to be this way or doesn't want to show up for me right now. It's that their biology will not allow them to. It's a very different experience. Yeah. So do that for ourselves and say, oh, my nervous system is doing something on my behalf right now. And so I can't biologically do this other thing that I might want to. And then we can begin to work with that. Talk a little bit more. Thank, thank you for that. Talk a little bit more about the sympathetic nervous system. Talk about that. Because again, you know, we hear the terms fight, flight. And, and the new one for me was this dorsal shutdown. Like yeah. I didn't even know about that until I don't know how long ago, but that when I learned about that, I was like, oh my goodness. So talk a little bit about what happens in the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is a system that mobilizes us for action, right? It, its survival responses are active, either aggression, fight, or escape, flight, right? Mm-hmm. And then in its non-reactive, non-survival role, which it has as well, it regulates breath rhythms and heart rhythms and gives us energy to move and play and passion and all of that. So we don't want to think of these systems as, as always survival. They're survival and everyday roles. Mm-hmm. So that's the sympathetic nervous system. And many, many people recognize sympathetic nervous system because it's big and noisy and loud and you can see it in action. But the polyvagal theory, you know, Steve's real contribution is this dorsal vagal Mm -hmm. experience that was not um, well mapped, described, identified until Steve came along and did that. And this is a system of immobilization. There's a draining of energy. There's a sense of becoming invisible, some flavor of disappearing um, in its strongest response. It's dissociation, but there are lots of flavors of feeling like, I'm not really here, I'm just going through the motions. You know, that's a flavor of dorsal and it's a protection. Yeah. You know, and the nervous system is simply saying, if you were fully here and present, it would be too dangerous. So I'm going to make it possible for you to survive. Right. Mm. And, and that's the dorsal experience. And then in its non reactive everyday role, it runs our digestion. So it's this really important system. So, you know, sympathetic and dorsal work together along with ventral, which is this newest system that helps us socialize and connect and, you know, move through the world with a sense of organization and safety. And when I say connect, I want to make sure that I say connect not just to others, but connect to myself, Mm -hmm. connect to the world around me and connect to spirit. And those connections are emergent properties. They come from this regulated ventral vagal place. Yeah. So the goal then would not be to be in parasympathetic all the time. It's a balance is what I'm hearing you say. Right. So the goal is not to be in ventral all the time, right? Mm -hmm. The goal is to know how to get back to ventral when I get pulled into sympathetic or dorsal. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I think people often think the, the goal is to be regulated all the time. Yeah. That's unachievable, yeah. of course. And yeah. we we'll probably would take some of the flavor of life away, right? We we need all of these experiences. So so yeah, I, I like to call it we I, I think our autonomic nervous system inherently knows how to get to ventral. So I call that our home. We have a home in ventral, all of us, no matter what our history, the nervous system knows how to get there and longs to be in ventral. So that's our home. And then we travel to these other places, right? And so it's really, do we have a map so that we know how to get back to ventral? And disease, either psychological or physical disease, doesn't come from getting pulled out to vent- of ventral. It comes from being stuck in survival. Yes. So being able to mm-hmm. find our way back. So this flexible response means that I, I have all of the flavors, of all of those states, all the time, and I can find my way back to enough ventral to be regulated. Yeah. So are we born then, you're saying, I think I'm hearing you, that we're born with the ability to, our nervous system at birth, is is this the right way to say it, balanced ventral? 
<laughs> is that the way to say it? Or just ventral, <laughs> which is balanced. <laughs> right. As long as, so let's think of it this way. If you think of ventral as holding sympathetic and dorsal in a warm embrace, mm-hmm. that's a regulated nervous system. We have Perfect. enough ventral on board to, to hold sympathetic and dorsal so they can work in the background doing what they need to do. It's when ventral can't hold that we have either a sympathetic survival or dorsal vagal survival response and we suffer from that. When we come into the world, as long as we come into the world as a full-term baby, then our ventral vagal system is ready to take on its job and what do we do when we first come into the world? We look for someone else to go regular mm-hmm. yeah. for that safe other person. That's a biological need to, to feel safely connected to another human. And we think about that with babies and then with children, but that is a need that is lifelong. We have a lifelong need to feel safely connected to other people. I like to talk nervous systems. Our nervous system is longing forever to be in connection with other nervous systems. Yeah. I agree, hundred percent. And is there any sort of do you blend attachment theory at all into the polyvagal theory? You certainly can. You know, the the state of the nervous system sets up the capacity for um, attachment to happen. That is what I was thinking right there. What you just yeah. said, yeah. Like if my nervous system is off, how in the world am I supposed to attach properly? Right, right. And if right. you know you come into the world and you're your caregiver's nervous system is dysregulated, then you don't get the the benefit of a regulated nervous system and learn how to come into safe co-regulation, right? And self-regulation is built on top of co-regulation. Oh, interesting. We have to co-regulate safely first in order to then learn how to self-regulate. What about in utero? Do you find that if if you're if someone that's pregnant and they're in an abusive situation or they don't want the baby, does that baby's nervous system get affected even in utero? Yeah, in utero? The, the research on um, nervous system response in um, in utero has been on um, anxious and depressed moms, mm. and, and the ways that this gets transmitted to to the baby. There's a sweet research on touch. Touch is so important and that when a pregnant mom touches her her um, stomach, that the baby reaches out to touch the inside of the stomach. So there, there's this I know, is that sweet? That's so there's sweet. There's a that yeah. happens already. Yeah. You know, before birth, the nervous system is being shaped by the environment. And you know, if we want to think about that for a minute, there's this concept called neuroception. Mm-hmm. which is the way the nervous system takes in cues of safety and danger. And it takes it in um, through what's happening inside your body, but it takes it in through the environment as well. So, you know, a, a baby in utero is, is swimming in an environment where it's taking in cues of safety and danger. So that's in the environment, inside our bodies, and then between between nervous systems, it's looking for cues of safety and danger. So all that's going on all the time. And, you know, you can see that when a baby comes into the world immediately there's this there's this sense of who is this little one how is this little one yeah. been so far and then that you know hopeful and beauty part of of polyvagal theory is that the nervous system is always being shaped so even if mm. i here in my you know i'm 66 and whatever i am at 66 now is still being shaped right i can reshape every moment by putting attention on these patterns and and befriending my nervous system and figuring out, well, what does need to happen? What would I like? How would I like to shape it now? Yeah. That was, that was in the, my next question is, so if our nervous system, when we were born, I'm thinking about myself and I know other people that had, had colic. I cried for 22 hours a day for nine months. Oh. My poor mother, like I cannot even imagine nobody would babysit me. So I know in the work, my personal work that I've done, my nervous system, <laughs> It was, you know, high alert, like from the very beginning. But so my question is, and I know this is true for me, I feel like our nervous system, like you said, and I, and I want to say this because I'm sure other people are thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I, when I was in the womb, my mother was, you know, but our nervous systems can change and they're always ever changing. Correct. Yes. So the nervous systems are changing moment to moment. So you're never stuck with what you have. Mm-hmm. You can reshape it in a variety of ways. And it's really in putting the attention 
in bringing intention to that shaping that we get to choose yeah. how, we, how we shape and, and how we engage with our nervous system. So yeah, if you, you know, had a pattern of, of, you know, sympathetic high charge, hypervigilance, yeah. you know, um, you know, I'm just, getting to know you here but you don't give off that energy now so you've reshaped your system in beautiful ways thank right? you that's a compliment coming from you honestly thank beautiful. you yeah. yeah thank you so we were talking about fight fight or flight dorsal i would love to go over some examples of again what is that like How, you know i realize I've, I've had clients in my office i'm like I think you just entered into fight or flight. And they're like, really? What does that mean? I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. so can yeah. we really go into what that, and I know a lot of people know what this is, but would you, I would like to hear it from you. Like, what does that feel like for us? And then also my favorite now, dorsal, talk to us about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So <laughs> I have an example. I have a couple examples for you on that, but I'd like to hear Good. what you have to say yeah. about that. Yeah. So, you know, that sympathetic mobilization that feels like this, this big energy, overwhelming energy, too much energy in my system to, to, for me to be organized in, in some way and, and move through the world. And you, you sense that in yourself or in someone sitting across from you when you can feel that, that powerful energy starting mm -hmm. to, to activate and it feels disorganized. It doesn't feel like it's leading in a, in a um, direction. It can feel the, the voice can become really loud um, in the fight mode. You know, it feels like um, someone is coming after you, yeah. you know, and it can be, it doesn't have to be in a huge way. It's it, you're again, through your nervous system, you were taking it in as a cue of danger. So mm -hmm. it can be a tone of voice. It can be a, a movement. The muscles usually get more rigid. There's this sitting up straight. This is leaning forward, coming at, there's an eye gaze that happens. And then in flight, there's this active, I need to get out of here now right? There's that sense of, get me out of here. I can't stay here. So it's, so sympathetic is always a very, very active. There's a ton of energy going on. And that's really how you feel it in the room. It feels like too much energy for this person to manage in a way that that's going to move them forward effectively because fight and flight are, are simply survival responses. And when you enter a survival response, your thinking brain doesn't go with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it turns itself off. Yes, yeah, yes. there is no logic. It's gone. Right. Mm -hmm. The inability to plan or, or problem solve. Right. Mm -hmm. so, and then in dorsal, there's a lack of energy. You really feel all the energy draining from your body from, you know, it's like this, this sort of, um, I often for myself, because for me, dorsal is a very familiar place. You, you were sympathetic mm -hmm. growing up. Dorsal was my home mm -hmm. away from home, so to speak. And it's the <laughs> sense of, of sort of taking a step back so that mm -hmm. I'm still here, but I'm not really here. That's sort of the first flavor of, of dorsal. It's this disconnect because things don't feel safe, right? As in sympathetic, sympathetic's danger, dorsal is even deeper than that. It feels you know, like this you know, metaphorical life threat that's happening because you can get quiet, but be ventral and be perfectly safe and present. But in dorsal, when you get quiet, the energy drains away and you feel endangered. And so sometimes there's a numbing of, of your body. Um, your brain is fuzzy. There's this yeah. fuzziness. There's this, I need to be invisible. You know, as a kids, for kids, if you think about this, the sympathetic place is this big acting out. You, you, that, that kid, you always know where that one is. They're getting the, yeah. the you know, they're, they're getting sent to therapy because they're acting out in some way. And dorsal can often be this being unnoticed Oh, never talks up is never a problem. They never talk up or any. And I'm curious, like, are they really there? Right. right. Because it's the ability to fly under the radar because not because I want to, but because it's unsafe for me to be seen. So, so invisible. Someone well, that feels invisible would be in dorsal. Yeah. yeah. What causes someone's nervous system, or maybe I don't know if we know this or not. Maybe you do. Why does one nervous system choose, let's say, fight or flight or dorsal? Like, how does that happen? You know, I'm not sure we really know that yet. And I always right. tell people, because I have, you know, work with clients to say, well, well, why didn't I go to sympathetic? And I said, I don't know. Your nervous system decided that dorsal was the safest place to be, 
right? And and we know for many, many people, dorsal is the safest place to be because fighting back would have meant death or would have meant more harm. Whereas that collapse response mm. is, you know, allows me to live to fight another day, so to speak, right? Right, so, right, right. You don't get to choose that. You know, I, I teach a lot and I'll say, so if something really bad happened, if there was this big, loud thing that came in through the window right now, you don't get to choose whether you run, fight, or collapse on the floor. Your yeah. nervous system's going to choose for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fasc- fascinating. I think about, um, I did the Gottman training many, many years ago. And you know, when they talk, when he talks about an eye roll, is contempt. And I've had, you know, couples in my office and one of them will do an eye roll and the other one, mm-hmm. I watch it. It's fascinating because the other person will either go into a fit rage, you know, or mm-hmm. you, I can feel their energy. It leaves. I'm like, yeah. well, this is fascinating. Yeah. Just yeah. from an eye roll. And that's something too with our nervous system. I want people to become aware of. It could be an eye roll. It could be the tone of voice triggers that nervous system. Absolutely. What else trigger? I mean, the I, what I'd love to talk about is like the very subtle things that. So the eye again, movement of the eyes, the tone of voice, movement, movement of the hands. You know, I'm I have Italian in me, so it's like I'm moving my hands all the time. I'm like this all the time, right? Yeah, moving the head, lower. So, but it could be lowering the voice, but going deeper or a higher tone of voice. Right? These are subtle things that are throwing people into fight, flight, dorsal. Or, or bringing them to ventral. Yes. Right. So, yeah. so yeah. You're, you're talking about the social engagement system, which is these cranial nerves that, that combine part of um, uh, our autonomic response patterns to, to take in cues of safety or danger. So warning or welcome from the eyes, from um, the tone of voice, we call that prosody, mm-hmm. uh, from your, the ways you move your head, from the social gestures we make, all of that is your nervous system taking in these cues below the level of your conscious awareness again. So an eye roll is, is yes, that's, that yeah. gets a response. Um, a certain breath, a sigh, mm. often gets a response from other people. And again, when we educate people to say, a sigh means your nervous system is, is looking for a bit of resetting, looking for some regulation. Right. And so if you can look at the other person who's sizing, oh, so their system just needed some regulation, which is much better than saying, wow, they're bored with me or they're frustrated with me. Right. Right. It's right. About their system regulating. Eye gaze, very simple shifts in the eye gaze from, mm-hmm. you know, we have this stare that we sometimes do. Mm-hmm. And then we have this neutral look. Right. Mm-hmm. And both a stare and neutral are often signs of danger to another nervous system. The stare, because it, it does come with an agenda. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. The neutral because there's not enough information for me to know what's going on over there. Right. You're reminding me I've worked, gosh, 25 years ago in a prison as I did an internship in a prison. And, and yeah. when we were walking down the halls, they said, do not give anyone eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> do yeah. not look at anyone in this. Pr-. I thought, fascinating. I said, what will happen? And they said, you might spark a fight. They might come after you. I was like, whoa, just yeah. from again, looking yeah. at someone. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up with an uncle that was a rager. And right before he went, and, and because, you know, we're Italian, we all live together yeah. every summer at the lake house and every weekend. And, you know, uh-huh. we're all enmeshed, all in one house all the time. And he would perch his lips like, that was watching me. Yeah, it was like, and then I knew here it comes, right? Mm-hmm. He's going yeah. after my mom. He's pissed yeah. about something. Yeah. And guess what? I married someone that not, he's not a rager. Mm-hmm. But my husband will sometimes, uh-huh. when he's defending himself, he does yeah. the exact freaking mm-hmm. same perching of the lips. And there and you I, go. It, yeah. It's 25 years of this. And, um, mm. and I noticed the more conscious I become, of course, with, with my life, mm-hmm. I noticed when I started becoming conscious around that, I'm like, wow, I am bracing for mm-hmm. rage. And he right. does not rage. Like, mm-hmm. Right. But my body would be in freeze mode, and then I would check out. I'd, I'd just leave. Right. You know, right. I don't do it anymore. But it's fascinating that something as simple as that, like boom, mm-hmm. my whole nervous system would go into high alert. Right, because it's responding to a familiar cue of danger. We call you know that neuroception again, which is which is coming up with a mismatch. It was yeah. a match with your uncle, with your husband's the mismatch, and so we bring perception, we bring awareness to neuroception. 
And then we add that next level of discernment. And my question that I ask people to consider is in this moment, in this place with this person, is that level of response needed? Right. Yes. And then yes. them, you can begin to say, oh, it's, it's my husband. It's not my uncle. Yeah. He has the same thing, but he goes a different place with it. And you're beginning to teach your nervous system that this cue is a different cue now, even though it looks the same, that's a different cue. And yeah. this, this might be different for everyone, but is there a, a timeline? Like how long does it take for us to like re-regulate our nervous system? I need, I need black and white here. Like put it in a box for me. It takes six and a half months. <laughs> yeah, 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 give you the box. Sorry about that. I like the boxes though, Deb. <laughs> we all do. We all do. You know, and it really, you know, it's so dependent. It's dependent on, you know, how your system's been shaped, how, how long it's been shaped in that way, how intensive you are about doing the reshaping. You know, yeah. I'm a therapist, so, you know, I see clients once a week and I come to, to discover pretty quickly that that's not enough, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. I would always give my clients something to do between sessions to mm -hmm. keep shaping their nervous yes. system because it's being shaped all the time. And so we bring this conscious awareness to it. So, yeah, I can't give you a, an answer to that. Dang one it. I want that timeline. That everybody <laughs> wants to know. I know. I know. You know, I guess we just say, you know, it, it's possible. I guess the other thing I would like to say for, for people when they're tracking their changes is come up with some very simple, nuanced landmarks um, to look for, benchmarks to look for. Don't look for the great big, huge change. It will come. But along the way, you're making these little changes that are really important to track and pay attention to. And that keeps us in the process of making the change. So what would that look like? Like something like you can, we can use me for an example. Like I, so for me, like I, I do that positive self-talk like, okay, it's just Graham. He's perching his lips. He's, he's upset. He's defending. He's not going to rage. And I, th so the more I'm able to stay in my body, that's progress. So mm -hmm. someone that, what if someone so dorsal again is when there's that total shutdown. So they may not, they may notice, Hey, wait a minute, I'm halfway gone, but I'm sort of here too. So Right, right. Little, yes. So, so for both of those examples, what you're saying is you have a, uh, you have enough ventral on board to be aware of what's going on. Mm. So, you know, I'm always looking for how can we have, you know, just a, you know, call it like a critical mass of ventral, so that we're not totally hijacked by sympathetic yeah. dorsal. Yeah. And then, you know, we we measure by you know, frequency, intensity, and duration. How right. Often is it happening less often? Is it happening less mm. intensely? And does it not last as long? Those are all markers of change, which are which are beautiful. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just means it's happening differently. Which mm. again, I, you know, if we can think about that, the question we want to ask ourselves is, what what's something different that happened today? Not something better or worse, but what's something different? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. nervous system is is not a a good bad system. It's simply a system that acts. So what, how did it do something differently today? I like that. I have, um, I want to share an example. I have a friend of mine that dated this guy for years. He was a wonderful guy. The day she got married, he became, well, he must've been the whole time, but like an alcoholic, verbally abusive, and just did a 180. And this girl came from a lovely childhood, like no big issues, you know, everything healthy nervous system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Married this guy. He changed overnight mm -hmm. and uh, his alcoholism came out verbally abusive, a tiny bit of even physical abuse and making a long story short again, she was married a few years, went through a divorce mm -hmm. and in the middle of the divorce, um, there was a restraining order because he was, you know, mm -hmm. for many reasons, I'm not going to go into all that. But what I found fascinating was again, her nervous system growing up, she didn't have that dorsal, everything was very in balance. And he would so much, I'd be with, I was with her a few times. He would text her mm -hmm. and I would watch her. It was fascinating. And I, gla I get eye glaze, glazing of the eyes. And yeah. she, and I would sit and go, We're, you're gone. And she goes, I feel like I left the state. I don't know what just happened. And it shocked her. Mm -hmm. So just that would sense, and this is why I want to share this, because I think this happens to a lot of us and we don't know what's happening. Right. What's happening is that, you know, it's the nervous system hijack. We're going into dorsal. Absolutely. Because the nervous system is, is intuiting a, a life threat. And, and, you know, for someone else, 
that might put them into a, an active sympathetic flight. Yes, right? exactly. Exactly. We no idea, but so we don't system- know why her system would go to dorsal versus fight or flight. Yep. Yeah, right. It was fascinating to watch. I watched her. I say, wow. And I was with a few of my friends when we were with her one time and, and the text came in or, or a phone call would come in and it'd go to voicemail. Yeah. And it was like whoosh, gone completely. One time I was with her and I was sitting next to her and I looked down in her phone, you know, and the text came in and I put my hands very gently on her shoulders and I said, stay with me, you know, we're here together. Let's feel our feet on the floor. And I, so for her, if someone's listening to this and they're saying, oh my gosh, that's me or that's my whomever. Mm -hmm. It's again, it's that being, becoming conscious and becoming aware and self-talk, you know, like being conscious with your talk. And what else would you say? I love about what you said, because in, when we go to dorsal, we feel as though we are alone in the world where no one is ever going to find us again. Mm -hmm. What I love about what you said was that you made physical contact and said, I'm right here. You know what you're, you're talking to her nervous system. Don't talk to her brain because her brain's not there to Yes. Yeah. <laughs> talking to our nervous system saying, I'm right here with you. My nervous system is here with yours. Mm. You are safe with me in this moment. Because in order to navigate the world in a, in a way that feels nur- nourishing, we have to feel safe. Yeah. And her nervous system felt a life threat. And you were saying, I'm here. And then you added physical touch. So, you know, physical touch is great. We don't need it because your nervous system was talking to hers very carefully and very lovingly saying, I'm right here with you, right? Yeah. So that's that's what's needed. And, and when we go to dorsal, in, until we're really used to it and know how to, you know, we'll be more skillful in coming back, we need another person there to help us yeah. feel that safety, you know, feel that it's safe to be with another person and that they're not going to let us just float away. Because that's the feeling. You're untethered in the world and you're floating away somewhere and can't find yeah. your way back. So that was really beautiful what you what you offered. Yeah. You and know. I and I and I'm hearing you again say it's about co-regulating. Like so if I'm not in fight or flight or dorsal mm-hmm. and you are, I can just sit in the same room as you, next mm-hmm. to you, mm-hmm. and maybe not even touch you. Of course, touch is helpful from what you're yeah. saying. But that helps you to come back down. Yes. It's, so in, in dorsal, you're letting the nervous system know there's another nervous system here with you. Mm-hmm. And it's a system that's anchored in ventral. And I'm going to stay right here with you and hold you safely until you can come back into ventral too. In mm-hmm. sympathetic, you want to be an active nervous system because if you're in that lovely, calm, kind place, that other nervous system goes either doesn't recognize you at all or goes, oh, that that one doesn't understand anything about me. So in that one, you're in an active place, still ventral, still caring and, and, and compassionate, but wow, I feel the energy that's going on right now. Yeah. And I'm right here with you. So it's, so it's still, I'm right here with you, but it's a very different, I'm right here with you. And you do so, that through your tone of voice and your movements and the way that you're using your system. So wait, maybe I missed that. But so when do we show up in, with that nervous system versus just a calm, soothing nervous system if someone is off? So you show up with a, hey, I'm right here with you and I can feel you got a lot going on when they're in sympathetic. Oh, when they're in sympathetic. You and, they're, so w- w- and, and that would mean they're in fight or flight or freeze. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So fight or fight or fleas, freeze, <laughs> please, freeze. <laughs> we want to have that, hey, I'm here, I'm right here. Come on, you know, that kind of nervous system. So fight or flight, yes. Freeze is a complicated blend, right? I was just going to say, that's kind of dorsal, right? Well, there's really two freezes. There, there's the... Dorsal freeze, which is this full collapse, and I'm frozen because I have absolutely no energy in my system. I can't, I can't move. And so, in that case, I just need you to sit next to me and be very, send me energy and just be very compassionate and let me know that I'm not alone. The mm-hmm. other freeze is a is a blended state of sympathetic and dorsal mm-hmm. at the same time because dorsal is immobilizing me, but yeah. sympathetic has me. T- totally rigid and it's that deer in the headlights yes yeah 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 and so with with that one it's a little more complicated how you show up and probably the showing up is oh wow i can see that you are frozen right now because as it begins to unfreeze there's going to be this quick burst get out of, yeah of yeah get yeah. away so yeah. yeah 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 so so then what do you do so you're you know so that one is the is that you know what's going to happen as this person 
begins yeah. to unfreeze and and I'd probably be you know showing up with a with a little more containing mm-hmm. energy and mm-hmm. saying wow I get that you're really in freeze right now and when you begin to unfreeze it's going to be a burst of sympathetic energy and I just want you to know I'm right here mm. something like that are you can you do this over the phone with someone you know you can I think phone is is more challenging if you haven't already ha- established a relationship. And I know nowadays, you know, teletherapy, telehealth, um, mm-hmm. therapy via whatever these platforms are. Yeah. Coaching via these platforms is, is popular, is, is needed in many mm-hmm. cases, because we can't be in the same room with many of the people we're working with. And I would guess that kind of like you and I were saying prior to this whole in- interview, like, can we do it with video? Because it's so much easier to look at you. So I would guess if, if I'm with, I feel more with you versus on the telephone, I can't see you. Yes. So it's much more difficult. Than it that. must help with regulation if I can see you and I'm Absolutely. feeling your energy and I'm looking at your facial expressions, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I, would I also do. I also get a sense of your environment and you get a sense of mine because mm-hmm. environmental cues are huge. Yeah. And on the phone, we're missing. We miss face, we miss environment, we miss so much. It, my nervous system really struggles with with just phone. It really yeah. does. I yeah, yeah. the visual. So these platforms that allow video are really, really helpful. And I think we can do some really good work this way because even though we just met, a few minutes ago, yeah. our nervous systems are feeling a connection, right? They're happy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I had an experience. Um, I, I, I don't want to tell you about my experience. I want to say, I know people that have had maybe abuse in their childhoods. And I know that then as adults, mm. they get thrown into some sort of dorsal where they're doing, you know, Netflix for three days, can't mm. get off the couch kind of thing or eating, 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 you know, or not eating, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do these people do that are by themselves and can't co-regulate? You know, you know it, like, I guess, I guess that that needs to be an awareness. And people go, I'm just checking out. Is checking out the same thing as dorsal shutdown or is it different? So lots of questions. Give, <laughs> give me a box. I need some boxes to up. I know. Get some boxes. I know. I gave you four four uh, questions right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once we know our system, then I can feel I'm being pulled towards dorsal, and rather than simply turning on a Netflix series that goes for three days and just being unaware and just being pulled into it, I can say, "Oh, so one of the things that I know." helps right now is to go turn on Netflix and just let it go for a bit. Mm -hmm. Rather than being sucked in, I make an intentional choice to move into that. And in order to make that intentional choice, I have to have a little bit of ventral on board to be able to do that. I I work with my clients to create a regulating resources map. And I love that you use Netflix. It's on my regulating resources map. It's one of the things I use when I'm feeling that need to escape. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, and, and I will. T- and for me, I love a series because I don't have to push oh, yeah. any buttons. It just nope. <laughs> it's through. automatic. It just keeps yeah. going. <laughs> and if if when I do it, I say, "Oh, okay, I'm using this regulating resource. I'm not just going to be there for three days doing it. I'm going to do it mm-hmm. for a while, and then I'm going to say, where am I now?' Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, it's it's really a question of getting to know your nervous system and knowing. You know, what are the resources? And resource simply means it's something that's going to help me begin to move back towards ventral. Yeah. So if my resource is to even crawl into bed, pull the covers up over my head and, and nap for two hours, it's a resource because I'm making an intentional choice to use it rather than just going to bed and mm-hmm. being there for three days, which is not a resource, right? I hear you say the same thing over and over again, which I love. My intention. I'm intentionally, you know, it's bringing consciousness. That's living in our adult chair. It's like, yeah. I'm bringing consciousness in and saying, I'm going to choose to watch Netflix right. because I need to decompress right now. Or I'm going to choose to get in bed. Mm-hmm. It's when we're unconscious about it. That's the problem. Right. I had an experience in the fall. I took an experiential shadow training mm-hmm. with eight other people. I love intense work. I love doing my own work. It's I, to me that I know I'm crazy. I think it's fun, but I, I love to uncover and discover more of Michelle. Mm-hmm. So, and, uh, and I, anyway, long story short, I went to this training. It was Deb 
<laughs> so intense, oh, which I was yeah. like, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Oh, but oh. after the first day, I said, there's only eight of us and there is a helper. And I said, wait a minute, who's grounding us? Like, where's the decompression at the end of the day? Where's the, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't any. And Deb, oh my gosh, by day three, yeah. I was shaking. Like yeah. I, my, I was sitting at lunch and I was shaking. And they're like, oh, you're processing. I'm like, you know, yeah. this doesn't feel right to me. After eight days, I'm flying home. Oh. It was in tent, people that had horrific childhood and from the unconsciousness, the shadows coming out and they're acting it out and they're, we're role playing with them. It was so fun, but also there was a part of me that's like, this isn't right. Mm. On the, it was fascinating because it was all about dorsal, which I didn't know. I knew mm. about dorsal, not to this level. Mm. And I want to share this because people need to hear that this can happen. So I made it through the week. It's a little bit like, yeah, I don't know if I want to engage so much. By the time I'm on the airplane home, I started getting tired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep in Denver, back to Nashville, mm -hmm. and got back to Nashville. The next day I got up, you know, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to take a day. The next day after that, I got up. I could, I sat down to do work and answer emails. I could not put a sentence together. Couldn't, I was sleeping 14 hours a day, if not longer. All I wanted to do was sleep. I had a week of that, right? And I said, God, maybe I have mono. Like I said, yes. something, I kept saying to my friends, something's yeah. not right. Mm -hmm. Thank God mm -hmm. I have a teacher and a friend who knows this very well. Mm -hmm. And I, I, we spoke after a week and I said, tell me, Oh. something's not right. And I told her about my experience. She goes, you're in freaking dorsal <laughs> shutdown. And I said, to the, really? I thought I had mono. She said, go get in the shower and take a cold shower, cold, hot, cold, hot, get your face wet with cold water on armpits, spine. Mm -hmm. I want you to splash cold water on your face. And she's, and all I wanted to do was isolate. Right. Right. And she said, go get with people. And I said, I don't want to. I'm so exhausted. I think I have mono. She says, you don't have mono. You're in complete dorsal shutdown. Yeah. Fast. You know what? I'm, I'm grateful though now on the other end of it. Cause I'm like, yeah. it was way too intense. This, I mean, well, I'm the, not going to It's interesting because you, you, it was the way we would put it in, in polyvagal languages. That was too big a challenge for your nervous system. Oh yeah. Right? And there, there were not these, there weren't, weren't ventral anchors around and you couldn't have these moments of, of rest. And I think you know, your experience was in a training, but I think in, in life, this happens for us all the time that we override what our nervous system is telling us. Yes. Yeah. And we need to learn to listen and pay attention. And then what, what I like to say is we want to stretch our nervous system, but not stress our nervous system. Ooh, that's good. So as we move from stretch to stress, we go into a survival response. And once you go into a yeah. survival response, you are not learning anything. You are not processing anything because your system is simply in survival. So, you know, we want to be really careful yeah. how we move through life and what we um, want our nervous system to do and how we listen and say, you know, that this feels like too much today for yeah. me. Yeah. Engage in. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It was for me, Deb, but it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And she pushed me. I had had dinner plans. It was my birthday, I remember. And I said, I can't go. I'm exhausted. She said, I need you to go. Please yeah. go. Yeah. And I pushed so, I was yawning the whole time. I got to dinner and I sat with these people. Yeah. All of a sudden, my energy started coming up. It was fascinating. Yeah, I loved it. I loved the experience system, of, it was such yeah. a contrast. Your nervous system was around other nervous systems it felt safe with and it felt welcomed. Yeah. That's right. And then so, within like a few days, boom, I was back to myself and I thought, wow, what a, what an example of dorsal shutdown. I know it. I know when I'm completely in it now, that's for sure. And for people who don't have safe nervous systems to be around when they're feeling that, I invite my clients to just go be in a place where there are other people around. Yeah. So your nervous system is reminded there are other nervous systems. I don't have to engage with them, but I'm with other nervous systems. They can feel the energy. Yeah. And you don't have to think anything about it. Nope. You're nope. just, your bodies are co-regulating with someone yep. else that's in bad. That's what's so cool yep. about this. I yep. love it. Oh my gosh. I have so many more questions. We only have seven minutes. Okay. I'm going to be quick. Talk about, <laughs> we need two hours. Talk okay. about, if you wouldn't mind, fascinating to me too, the physical ailments that come with 
someone that might sit in dorsal shutdown more than, okay, fight or flight freeze, because we're looking at the diaphragm, what happens below the diaphragm versus above the diaphragm. So fight flight is above dorsal shut down below. Talk about some of the illnesses that people might be experiencing because of the nervous system. You know, and, and each, you know, sympathetic has, has its, because this, when you're in a sympathetic fight flight, you're, HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis is, is engaged. And so you're flooded with cortisol and adrenaline, mm -hmm. which brings its own health um, challenges that, that we know about. Um, mm -hmm. And then in dorsal, your digestion is impacted because dorsal runs your digestion only when ventral is, is connected with it. So when you're in a dorsal shutdown, you've lost ventral and your digestion's just all over the place. So like people would have like irritable bowel. They would yeah. have all of these kinds of things to do yep. with, with yep. intestinal issues, digestion yep. issues yep. versus, you know, chronic, yeah. Chronic fatigue has also, also been mapped to, to dorsal. You know, it's interesting. And there's a lot more research going on nowadays about, you know, how is the nervous system playing into all these diseases and, and diagnoses and what happens if we regulate the nervous system first yeah. and then see what's left. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering about, and thank you for answering my question. I was like adrenal fatigue, candida, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. What about like anxiety and depression? Yeah. Like so this has to be linked somehow. Sure. So anxiety is an overactive sympathetic, right? It's, it's just mm -hmm. a word all the time. Yeah. And depression is this overactive dorsal survival response where I'm just in this more deadened, dulled, place. So yeah, you know, for, you know, people, you know, therapists who look at the world through diagnoses, because we have to diagnose for, you know, insurance reasons. If you look at the DSM, mm -hmm. pretty much any diagnosis in the DSM, you can map to a dysregulated nervous system of some, some kind or another. So yeah. yeah. And if yeah. you put all that aside and simply look at, oh, let's be curious about how your system has been shaped and how it functions to move you through the world. Then we begin to know what do we want to do to reshape it, right? I love it. Okay, you ready? This is the speed round. Okay, <laughs> okay this is the, the biggest question. I'm sure people are like, but wait, how do I self-regulate? Give us some examples on what um, if again, like we're home, like, like for me in dorsal, like, Okay, I know. I now know when I feel myself start to slip into dorsal, I go take a cold shower. Mm -hmm. Tell us what, how do we self regulate? What are some things that we can do right now, whether we're in fight, flight, freeze, or dorsal? So, whenever you're in a sympathetically charged response, you need to find ways to safely discharge the energy and to organize the energy in some safe way. So, it's often movement of some kind, um, it's often uh, <clears throat> vocalization of some kind. So, you know, you might, you might listen to music, you might dance, you might sing, you might go to a yoga class, you might go to the gym, you might go for a walk, any of these sorts of things that are actively mobilizing your system in an organized way. Mm -hmm. Whereas in dorsal, you don't have energy to run your system and you need to be gentle in bringing it in. So what do you do? Can you get, nature is pretty predictably regulating of nervous system. Can you get out in nature can you just, you know, for if you're really in dorsal, talking to a friend can be way too much. Can you just text a friend mm -hmm. and get a response back? And then might you end up at some point needing a friend for coffee? But self-regulating in dorsal is tough because you're feeling lost and alone anyway. I actually like audiobooks because it brings you into, you hear voice and it Ooh. brings you in. Um, Netflix is great because the research says that we begin to take on the, the sense of one of the characters. Mm. So it is a way, music again, is a way to safely inhabit sympathetic and dorsal because we can kind of be with without being hijacked by. Um, sometimes writing, sometimes an intention breath, different kinds of breathing are definitely ways that, that help us. You know, what I encourage people to do, I, I have a I have a mapping process I do, but I would encourage people to kind of, when you're not in sympathetic and dorsal, when you're in enough ventral to look at it, sit down and make yourself a list. Mm -hmm. Because when you get to sympathetic or dorsal, you need your list already made because then yeah. you have to be able to think about it. So I was going to say, because we can't think straight when we're in that exactly. place. So yeah. yeah. Have a list and know where it is. <laughs> yeah. When my clients are overactive um, or, or activated in some way, I like, I, for me, Michelle, I love the, I love to rock. 
very mm. gently back and forth. That really soothes me. So I encourage my clients, but some clients and I, I'll offer this to them and they're like, oh, that makes me feel worse. I'm like, then don't do that. Yeah. Would you and like my beanbag on your lap? They're like, oh, I like that. You know, so <laughs> see, and that's it's getting to know yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. And never make an assumption about another person's nervous system mm-hmm. because one thing that feels really nourishing to mind totally dysregulates yours. And so to help people know that there's no right or wrong here. This is yeah. your nervous system telling us what it needs right now. That that's the guiding question. What does your nervous system need in this moment? Right? That's the question. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Deb. This oh. was so great. I I again, you're like a movie star to me. I was so happy to have oh. you on. I'm like, Deb Dana. <laughs> I'm so happy. My heart's all right now. Thank you. I'm so I was so happy to have you on. So thank you. And thank you. I'm going to put it on air and I'm going to record it so you can't get out of it, <laughs> that you're going to come and be one of our master speakers for our adult chair coaching certification. I cannot wait to have you on that, but uh, Deb, can't that. wait, but yeah. let us know where, where can people find you? I have already pre-ordered oh, boy. <laughs> your next one. You've got a couple of things coming up, but tell us where can people find you? What do you, what do you offer? I know you have trainings because I've already been you know, stalking yeah. you on all that. Um, so talk to us about that. What's your website, everything that you so have the, the website is rhythmofregulation.com and mm-hmm. you can find everything there. I, I, I do a lot of trainings and you know, I have all sorts of different um, people in the helping professions come. I have coaches, I have licensed therapists, I have yoga people, I have body workers. So it's really because again, the nervous system is the nervous system. We're all exactly. System. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, books you can you can see the second books coming out in the in spring 2020 so soon creating a flip chart i'm having fun just i reading. know yeah. i saw that flip chart yeah i'm pre-ordering yeah. that too <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah and i hope i hope your listeners will uh you know come and come and find me uh, on the um under the polyvagal resources page on my website is the beginner's guide to polyvagal theory and that's free to download and then I post all the webinars and audios I do. So a lot awesome. of resources there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to keep your nervous system in balance and end on time because I know you have to leave. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I'm respectful of your time, Deb, but thank you so much. And I will put everything you just mentioned in our show notes for people that want more information on Deb Dana. And Deb, have a beautiful rest of your day. You as well. Stay in ventral. They love it. Yeah. <laughs> Sending you ventral vagal inspired energy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. All right, everybody. I will, gosh, I'll have everything in show notes like I just said. Thank you for joining us today, as always. And I will see you seated right here next week in the adult chair. Bye.